Good morning to all of you. Yesterday we have seen a part that is associated uh, with bioenergetics. Some definitions we have undergone with. Now today let us understand the part that is associated again with the metabolism. Basically it is associated again with the energy yielding process as well as the energy catabolism as well. So carbohydrate metabolism it's said to be one of the important part in which we'll be studying the carbohydrate glucose that how glucose gets metabolized. Now, the characteristic sugar of blood and tissue fluid is glucose. So every time when we are eating sugar, that sugar gets converted into, or that carbohydrate gets converted into simple form of sugar and ultimately it is the content of the blood. So every person, uh, if you just go along with a method of calculating the blood sugar, then you will have to only prick your finger and with the help of a glucometer, you can easily diagnose that how much amount of sugar is present inside the blood. Now, this metabolism of sugar takes place because of the pathways. The EMP and HMP pathways occurs in both prokaryotes and eukaryotes. So, metabolism of glucose is said to be one of the important part. Now, this metabolism is divided into two parts. One is called as catabolism and another is called as anabolism. So, catabolism is nothing but it is the breaking down of sugar molecule or breaking down of any substance and that has been utilized in terms of um, in, in the metabolism of the uh, cell while catab uh, the anabolism is nothing but it is building up of molecules which are utilized by the cells. Now the major pathway for aerobic catabolism of pyruvate is the TCA cycle. This part we are going to uh, deal a little bit later. Now carbohydrate metabolism. Carbohydrates is divided into two parts. One is called as anabolism and another is called as catabolism. <coughs> Sorry. and another is called as catabolism. So once the this part is said to be one of the important point because sugar breaks down to pyruvate. Now how does it does? It does with the help of glycolysis and pentose phosphate pathway. Secondly, another cycle is there which is associated with the gly glycolysis is the Krebs cycle and ultimately through this Krebs cycle the electron transport system or electron transport chain actually work. So all these processes are said to be interdependent processes. Glycolysis. We will start with the pathway of glycolysis, EMP pathway. It is the sequence of 10 enzyme catalyzed reactions by which one molecule of glucose is converted into two molecules of pyruvate. Now this is very important part. Then if you attend that uh, with the help of 10 enzymes are there, this 10 enzymes catalyze the reaction only one molecule of glucose, one single molecule of glucose gets converted into two molecules of pyruvate. The enzyme is located in cytosol. It is the only ATP producing pathway in some mammalian cells uh, like those are retin and the brain cells. Correct. Now, if you see here, this is the total metabolism structure that we, uh, we are able to see from glycolysis. From the glycolysis, the breakdown of the glucose molecules takes place in terms of pyruvic acid. And then it has been funneled through another pathway that is Krebs cycle. I'm going to deal a little bit later. Now, in terms of glycolysis, the first molecule that comes in play is called as glucose. So, what is glucose? This glucose is a six carbon molecule. Ultimately, it gets converted into glucose six phosphate with the help of ATP. This ATP donates its phosphate group at this particular junction, and with the help of enzyme hexokinase, this conversion is possible. So, glucose gets converted into glucose 6-phosphate with the help of enzyme hexokinase, hexokinase, most important. Then this glucose 6-phosphate gets converted into fructose 6-phosphate. If you see the structure, now this is the pentameric structure that explains the fructose is said to be a pentameric molecule and glucose 6-phosphate gets converted into fructose 6-phosphate with the help of enzyme phosphoglucoisomerase, phosphoglucoisomerase, correct. Okay. This fructose 6-phosphate gets converted into 1,6, fructose 1,6 bisphosphate. So at first carbon and the sixth carbon, uh, the fifth carbon of that particular uh, molecule of fructose, ultimately the uh, phosphates are being linked up with the help of an enzyme, phosphofructokinase, another ATP molecule is being utilized, which gives the phosphate group at this particular point. Now fructose 1,6 bisphosphate gets converted into two products, one is called as dihydroacetoxyacetone phosphate 
and glycerol dehyde three phosphate again the enzyme is called as aldolase aldolase enzyme now these two products dihydroxy uh, oxyacetone phosphate and glycerol dehyde three phosphate are interconvertible product with the help of enzyme isomerase correct if you see the structurally then ultimately the structures they when they will they will perform an enzyme it can easily convert these two structures into their intermediate forms now moving further with the help of an enzyme triose phosphate dehydrogenase and one nada nad molecule is been utilized over here one three bis phosphoglycerate is generated one three bis phosphate is phosphate is generated this do not remain stable for a long period of time and immediately gets converted to 3 phosphoglycerate by the help of enzyme phosphoglycerokinase again here the adp molecules now get converted to atp molecule two molecules of atp has been released so 3 phosphoglycerate gets converted to 2 phosphoglycerate one phosphate molecule goes off with the help of enzyme phosphoglyceromutase and this phosphoglycerate two uh, phosphoglycerate with the help of enolase gets converted to phosphoenol pyruvate which ultimately leads to develop pyruvate with the help of enzyme pyruvate kinase so this is the reaction of glycolysis if you see here right from glucose we come to pyruvate with the help of 10 enzymes and ultimately one molecule of glucose yields six uh, two molecules of atps reaction one now a very uh, clear reactions are been defined or we are going to study in great details hexokinate converts newly arrived glucose into glucose 6 phosphate first reaction what we have seen glucose 6 phosphate cannot ride with gel transporters back to the outside of the cell rapid conversion of glucose to glucose 6 phosphate keeps the transmembrane glucose concentration gradient steep this is an irreversible commitment step with a negative free energy is been changed ultimately the changes that takes place With the help of exokinase, leads to initiation of the particular pathway. Second reaction, a little, little isomerization takes place. Glucose six phosphate converted into fructose six phosphate with the help of enzyme phosphoglucoisomerase. Carbonyl O of the glucose six phosphate is removed from C one and C two, isomerizing glucose six phosphate to fructose six phosphate. See, here. this molecule has been removed and it has been. Position into another part. This paves the pathway for second PI to be attached to the C1 in the reaction three. So ultimately, the reaction three fructose six phosphate gets converted in that way, and this process is a little small amount of isomerization means certain structural changes that takes place in this particular reaction. Correct. So that's all for today, and we will be able to. Uh, ultimately deal with the uh, next reactions of uh, the process of glycolysis in our coming lecture good day for you